Hey guys, Big Rat 310s here again with um, something I'm going to call uh, Big Rat 310s Forgotten Reviews. These are basically, I've, I've, I've been wanting to do this for a while. These are basically um, shows and or shoot interviews that I saw but never really like reviewed them and I've just kind of been building them up. Um, I've, I've been planning this video for like seven months. I've just never found the time to do it because I'm always so busy with school. Like I just, I just finished my AP test as of today. I'm always extremely busy in my personal life, which is why I, I really only make videos once a week now. Um, once a week and I guess the pay-per-view on Sunday night. So I, I do my best, but I, I really am just swamped with work. I'll do, I, I promise to get more vids out during the summer. Um, remember back in the old days when I would make like two videos a day, three videos a day? Yeah. All right. So, um, but yeah, these are basically reviews that I just point blank forgot to cover. Um, there, there are various reasons, and um, usually, I'm, usually also when I'm not busy, um, I have a list of shows because usually in the world of wrestling, like you know, I have this cycle, and in the cycle, you know, I watch shows from various promotions, whether it be Ring of Honor, PWG, Dragon Gate, Chikara, CCW. You know, I always try to cycle out the promotion so I never get bored. You know, I constantly watch something different, and so th this time, however. The cycle's broken. I think there are many reasons for that because the recent CCW show that just came out, Best of the Best, um, I saw that on pay-per-view. King of Trios um, was out the next day. Uh, Dragon Gate USA had a pay-per-view and they haven't, had, they haven't had a show in a month. Ring of Honor had shows in March. They're, those are getting released now. Um, I shouldn't get that for another week and a half, two weeks though. Um, so Ring of Honor is releasing that. PWG just released DDT. Before, a few days ago, there was no DDT. So I got that. And, uh, yeah, there's just Evolve had Evolve 7 via IP review. There's, no shows are coming out. The cycle's broken. So right now, I literally have no current shows. So I've been watching old Ring of Honor shows that I've been backed up on for a while. In fact, just yesterday, actually today, I finished, almost finished, all the 2005 Ring of Honor shows that, uh, that I hadn't seen yet, that I had saved since, like, Black Friday 2009. So... Almost two years, a year and a half, basically, and uh, so I'm, I'm just catching up on that, and uh, that's what I've been doing. You know, just trying to. I have a lot of DVDs, just like random DVDs, like from. I have, I have a few WWE DVDs, a few TNA, um, some goddamn what are the crap? I saw the WSX complete first season, which I've had for almost a year and a half now. Uh, classic championship wrestling from Florida that I got in that grab bag, a few PWG DVDs. Yeah, I'm, I'm backed up. And usually at nighttime during the school weeks when I'm not doing anything, I try to catch up on some of this stuff. So let's get into some just some stuff that I was going to review, but I just never got around to it for various reasons. First, let's get off to Bragging Rights 2010. Um, I didn't see the show until, geez, I didn't see the show until probably December. And I just, I didn't want to make a review of it in December. So I thought, okay, whenever I do my forgotten reviews video, I'll just include this in it. Um, yeah, I know probably none of you want to hear me talk about Friday Night 2010, but it is the only mainstream pay-per-view I did not review last year. And I've made it a point to review every single one because my subscribers like that. So here you go. Daniel Bryan, Dolph Ziggler, really, really fun opener. Um, arguably Danielson's best match, singles match in WWE, if you don't count that seven man from SummerSlam. Uh, the only thing I could think that might be better than this was his Raw match with The Miz, which I really, really liked. So, yeah, most likely his best singles match so far in the WWE. Good stuff. Great job from Danielson. Great job from Ziggler, too. John Cena and David Otunga versus Cody Rhodes and Drew McIntyre. I've seen a lot of people crap on this. I thought it was fine. It, it did its point in telling a story that eventually went to nowhere since David Otunga never ended leaving um, the Nexus. But, hey, it told its story at the time, so two and a quarter. Ted DiBiase versus Goldust. This was also fine. It was just your average WWE wrestling house show match. I was fine with it. Two and a half. Goldust had a good performance. I'm reading Goldust's book for those of you who like, follow me on Twitter. Um, BigRat310. That is my Twitter account. Um, I don't know how people... Okay, let me get this straight. At my name for everything I use is BigRat310. This account was... I was originally on a BigRat310 account. However, that account got suspended because of various copyright claims by the WWE, even though none of them were even valid. That account is still open. You can go see it if you want. All the videos pretty much suck, but it's still there. But for everything I do, for everything, my Skype and my Twitter, it's 310. It's not spelled out, Big Rat 310 just to avoid confusion. Uh, Big Rat 310 is my Twitter. I'll post it because I'm on, I'm on that a lot. I post several times during the day, so you want to... 
keep up with what I'm doing. That's your way to do it. And uh, so, yeah, I talked on my Twitter. I've been talking about my Twitter how I'm reading Goldus's book. I'm currently reading Luthez's book, which I'm not done with. I've read like 20 pages of McFoley's book, put it down for Chris Jericho's book, and just never got back to finishing McFoley's book. But I, I, uh, I'm reading Goldus's books. I know it's really short, and I'm almost done with it, so I'll talk about that when I finish it. But, uh, yeah, hey, this, this match was fine. Decent performance for Goldus. Buried Alive match taken versus Kane. This was just, you know, this was just punches. I mean, what do you want from me? It was just they walked around the arena, they punched each other a lot, and then they went to the grave site. There wasn't, it wasn't really much of a match to it, but I didn't hate it. I did think it was the worst match they had from last year because I know a lot of people really hated their Hell in a Cell match and their Night of Champions match. I thought both those matches were fine, so this to me was the weakest of the three. Layla versus Natalia, standard duty women's match, shitty. Uh, Team Raw versus Team SmackDown. This was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed this. Um, definitely a lot of great action from both teams. I would have gone higher, except I disagreed with how they got Tyler Rex in the match. I thought it was bullshit. You know, you know the low-key drama, that's that's gone and over with. Uh, you know, and I thought it could have been paced a little better, the match. Uh, but still, generally, I, was, generally I was, wasn't was too upset with anything. It was fun, three and a quarter. Um, I haven't seen the previous year's bragging rights still, but... Yeah, th this match was good. I enjoyed it. And the main event between Orton and Barrett, nah, this was all right. I, I thought Barrett had improved. You know, you can tell style has improved, but the ending to this match was so shitty, and it wasn't given that much time, and the booking was atrocious that, you know, I can't I can't view this match in a positive light. So yeah, 5.5 out of 10. With a better main event, maybe this would have been a little better because it does have a really, really good opener and a pretty good freaking Team Raw, Team SmackDown match, but literally everything else in the show is pretty skippable. Um, and the main event isn't very good, and it's booked poorly. So 5.5 out of 10. Uh, next, we got Open the Global Gate from Dragon Gate. Yeah, I, I saw this show, like, fucking July. But um, you see, there's another video. There's a I have an All Sides of the Wrestling World video that I filmed in July, but I never uploaded it. I'll upload that soon. That will be Big Rat 310's Forgotten Reviews Part 2. And uh, I said in that video I was going to review Open the Global Gate. Then I went on my vacation. I saw Open the Global Gate on my vacation, and then I came back and I just, I don't know, I just never reviewed it. I don't even know why. But yeah, I saw the whole thing and I, I really like it. This is an awesome show. This is one of the best shows produced by Dragon Gate. Uh, these shows were taking place in 2009, right when people still thought Dragon Gate was like the best promotion in the world until they had so many shows that people realized, yeah, this shit isn't that good. Um, but yeah, the there's a lot of good matches. Let me talk about the Spanish Gate show. Uh, all three matches are really, really good. All, by the way, all the four-way elimination matches were just so much fun. Those are the best matches on each show, I believe. But yeah, the, this, the, the, all the matches were just a lot of fun. Great spots, really enjoyable. Now we're going to open the Germany. Now, specifically remember not liking the booking, the psychology of the Young Bucks versus Mark Haskins and Tommy End. Because the crowd hated the Young Bucks. And um, it was so evident that they did not like the Young Bucks. And so throughout the match, the Young Bucks are playing baby faces in peril, but the crowd doesn't care because they don't like them. And then, literally, I'm not kidding, when I think it was Nick or Matt Jackson made the hot tag, there was no reaction whatsoever. Like, zero. And, yeah, that's the problem because they formatted the match wrong. But the match was still fun besides that. A lot of fun. It was, like, it was a really great match, but that stuff really hurt it. Kagator versus Bad Bones was really short, but it was really enjoyable, too. Yokosuka, Yoshino, El Generico, Dragon Gate. This match was awesome. This is the second best match in the whole DVD. This is what I want four ways to be. This wasn't a four way where two guys wrestle and the other two guys wrestle. No, literally, there were four way spots. Like there was a four person um, abdominal stretch at one point, quadruple suplex at one point. They, they, they did a lot of four way spots in this match, a true fatal four way, not just two separate matches that happened to occur in the same ring. And this was a fucking great match. I really enjoyed this. Awesome stuff. Shima versus Mike Quackenbush. A little disappointing considering the two men involved, but still fine. Still, still a lot of fun. Really, really good stuff. But I just thought I thought it would be this great technical closet. And it wasn't, but it was still a really, really good match. Uh, six man, really fun. Uh, this is when I first got a taste of Zack Sabre Jr., but good stuff. Absolute Andy versus Shingo. A little disappointing. I thought this would be a little better, but it was still, like I said, this was also still fun. Shingo had a great performance, but I don't know. I, I wasn't that impressed with Absolute Andy. Um, but still good stuff. Three and a half stars. Then we get the UK show, which is by far the best of all these shows. Um, Kagator versus Mark Haskins, another short match. Horiguchi and Saito versus Storm and Marty Skrull. Really, really fun open. I really enjoyed it. Dragon King with Sadio Shino. This was a part of their feud. Um, this was probably the second best match they had, I think. 
I think the best match they had, in my opinion, was at um, Open the Northern Gate, their two out of three falls match. I love that match. Um, but then this was still really, really fun. Great spots. The crowd bought into it. They showed a video package explaining a few good stuff. Shingo Yokosuka was really fun. Shingo, I thought, could have performed better throughout this weekend, but he still had a decent showing. And the Young Bucks and Shima versus BB Hulk, Pac, and Naruki. This match was awesome. I love this match. So much great action. It was insane. It was like a standard Dragon Gate 6, man. Uh, much better than the one this year, in my opinion. It's just, just so much great action. Maybe a little bit overkill in some points. Maybe that's why it's not 4.5. But I still really, 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 really enjoyed it. So, yeah, definitely, definitely get that UK show. I think I th if you can get the UK show by itself, it's definitely worth it alone. But getting all three is a fucking steal. For all three shows, I would give it an 8.75. In reality, there's only two great matches, which is kind of shocking when there's 14 Dragon Game matches. But there's a lot of really, really good stuff, like so much that it's impossible for me to not highly recommend this. So, yeah, 8.75. Definitely pick it up if you haven't already. It's from it's from like 2009, but it's still a great. It's it's dragging me when it didn't get stale. Let me say that. Great stuff. Next we got Ring of Honor's Buffalo Stampede Two. Don't know why I didn't. Re I never reviewed this. I saw it when I was on my vacation, and I made a review on my iPhone, but the video wouldn't go to YouTube, and I spent like so much time trying to crop it to make it go to YouTube, but eventually I just said fuck it. It wasn't worth it, and I just never got around to reviewing it. But um, Delirious or Nestor Osiris was a, you know, was a decent opener. Fun. Uh, not much to it. Kind of like teacher versus student type of deal. Tyson Dukes, Eddie Edwards. Okay, this is my problem with the show. I've heard a lot of people complain about this. About, the you know, Davey Richards wasn't there, so they brought in Pee Wee. In my opinion, you should have done Pee Wee versus Eddie Edwards in a 10-minute TV challenge and put Tyson Dukes with Roderick Strong because Tyson and Roderick... In the time that Roderick had with Petey, I thought would have had a really, really great match. Like, really, really good. I'm a big fan of Tyson Dukes. So I thought that they, the placement there was a little off. I thought Pee Wee should have gone in Versailles Wars. Now I know the next night... I mean, there's a reason they put Tyson Dukes. Because the next night, you know, there was a gauntlet match. And Tyson Dukes pinned Eddie Edwards. But still, I still thought, even with that in mind, you know, changes are changes. Davey Richards wasn't there. You have to make the best matches possible. Because I don't think they realized how truly important Roderick Davey Richards was the main match on the show. And Davey Richards didn't show up. So try to make the best match possible. And I don't think they did that. Um, I think they should have put in Tyson Dukes with Roderick. I thought that would have been a better matchup. But his match with Eddie was still fine. Cabana Devar was very bland. I don't remember much of it. Um, Roderick versus Pee Wee. It was good. But I just thought, you know, seeing as how this is the replacement of Roderick versus Davey, I don't feel it lived up. Kings of Wrestling versus Cheech and Clyde. This is probably the most underrated Ring of Honor match of the year because, like, no one saw it and no one talks about it. But this match is so much fun. Very close to being four stars. Just truly, truly a really fast-paced match. A lot of great spots. Cheech and Clyde, had a great, great showing in Ring of Honor. And, yeah, how many people talk about this match? But I think it's a kind of a forgotten classic because I thought it was that good. Almost great. Austin Aries, Kenny Omega was a really fun match, but, you know, nowhere near the match they had at the Omega Effect, and kind of disappointing, the crowd was kind of dead. The Briscoes versus Sonic Express, I did not like this match that much at all. I actually thought this was the worst match on the whole show, because the Delirious Ernesto Osiris match, you know, that was just short and enjoyable. As far as a match that was actually given time and just did not deliver, this was that, because I really did not like this match that much. Um, two and a half stars. And Tyler Black versus Steve Carino. Fun, but too short. You know, it, it was good. There was good psychology. And um, it was enjoyable, but just too short. And for a main event, kind of disappointing. So I give the show 6.75. I originally gave it a 6.5. But, um, you know, the Chichi Cloud match was really... There's, I have a lot of three-star matches on this show. I have four, I believe. Four, and I have that Tyson Dukes Eddie Edwards match. So what the fuck? I'll bump it up to a 6.75. Because it wasn't... It was enjoyable for the most part. Like, I enjoyed almost every match except the cabana Tavari match and the Briscoes All Night Express match. I had fun watching the show. Just match quality-wise, there's nothing there. There's a reason why they combined this with Death Before Dishonor. You could tell this show wouldn't have sold on its own. Buffalo Stampede 2. Then we got Wrestling Observer Radio Shoots with Abdul the Butcher. This was great. Um, I definitely recommend this for various reasons. A, you have the documentary, which is Brian Alvarez interviewing Abdul the Butcher. It's like a two-hour documentary, and it's really, really informative. I didn't know that much about the Necro Butcher when I saw this. I saw this like five months ago, and it just it really gave me a great insight into his career. He goes into depth into Japan, how he never wrestled in the WWF, and how he thought that was a mistake. He even talks at the end about how he really badly wants to be in the WWE Hall of Fame. Don't know why, but he does, which I thought was kind of funny because this year he got inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. 
Yeah, he gives talks about all his opponents. He talks about his famous feuds with Carlos Colon, with uh, Bruiser Brody. You know, just a really great insight into his career. I thoroughly enjoyed it. It's not the best Abdul the Butcher documentary I've ever seen because I've only seen one. But I've heard people say, like, you know, it's not as detailed as it could be. But it's still, for a beginner who knows absolutely nothing about Abdul the Butcher, this would be a great start because... You get true. He, you get his true thoughts and opinions on why he joined wrestling, his best opponents, all this and that. It's a lot of fun. Great, great, great shoot interview. Now, um, the matches. Um, he has five matches on this disc, and I'm gonna warn you. Not the, these matches are not. What's the best way to say this? Um, aesthetically, aesthetically pleasing. Aesthetically, aesthetically pleasing. Um, it's not that they're bad matches. They're not. Some of them are really good. It's just for its time, you could tell this was a bigger deal than what it is now. Nowadays, it doesn't even hold up because some of these matches aren't even really matches. I'll get to that right now. First, I'll duel the Butcher versus Carlos Colon. Fun match. Thoroughly enjoyed this. You know, probably by today's standards, it'd probably be like a three-star match. And, you know, but the crowd was really into it and it built a, bright, it built a great angle afterwards. So I'd say three and a half. Abdul the Butcher Giant Bob, but this wasn't really a match. It was like four minutes long, and they just started brawling all over the place. It was a good brawl for what it was, and the crowd was really into it, so I'd give it two and three quarter. Abdul the Butcher versus Giant Warrior. This one also starts outside, and they brawl all over the place. And then Giant Warrior makes a comeback. Giant Warrior bleeds a lot. You know, it was it was fun. I enjoyed it. Three stars. I'll, I'll get into the ratings later. Abdul the Butcher versus Bruiser Brody. Kind of kind of disappointing. I was look, kind of looking forward to this. It was only four minutes long. Again, not much of a match. You know, at least the Giant Warrior, I believe the Giant Warrior and the Carlos Colon matches, actually maybe not the Carlos Colon matches, but I believe the uh, the Giant Warrior match had a finish. I don't think any match, I don't think any of these five matches except two had a finish. And we get to the War Games match, which was really, really good. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, three and a half star match. The, uh, the post-match angle was really, really good. So I bumped it up. And you know, the reason why I'm, I'm saying this now, the reason why I recommend this, is because you get to see a style of wrestling that we almost like never really see. Like this, these matches are hard to find. And you get to see just how, how Abdul the Butcher wrestles and how he interacted with the crowd. And I don't know, to me that's just really enjoyable. Maybe because I've never really seen it before. But it's just kind of interesting to see how, how this guy was treated in Puerto Rico and Mexico and Japan. And um, yeah, so like I said, the matches aren't really that great. I mean, the, but the Giant Bob and Brody matches weren't even really matches. They were just brawls. I don't know why I even rated them. The Carlos Club match was good. The Giant Warrior match was all right. I kind of bumped it up because, like I said, each 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 match is like giving a quarter through a half star bump because just seeing Abdul the Butcher in that environment, like to me, that was very interesting. Um, I, I just really enjoyed seeing him, seeing Abdul the Butcher wrestle. I don't know how to say anything else. It's just, it's really, it's quite interesting to see how he was treated. It's a great insight to how professional wrestling used to be. The War Games match was fun. It was kind of weird though because they called it a War Games match, but everybody started off in the ring and you have to handcuff your opponent to the cage. Kind of weird, but like I said, it gets ratings bumps. It gets like, I got like a quarter star rating bump because just seeing Abdul the Butcher in the environment, just seeing these matches from the 1980s, it makes, it makes you feel like a professional wrestling historian. And the restaurant portion was awesome. It's a tour of his restaurant, which I think is really cool. It's just, it's just funny. Like it's not, it's not funny. Like, ha ha, it's hilarious. It's just, it's charming to see. Wow. He actually has a restaurant. Wow. He actually makes this stuff. It's funny. You know, I really enjoyed it. I'm not trying to insult him in any way. I'm sure the restaurant's great. I'm just saying it's really interesting. All right. The shoots. I'm going to try to do this very quickly. You shoot with Kevin Sullivan. This was great. I really enjoyed it. He gave great insight to WCW and to Chris Benoit, everything about his career. Thoroughly enjoyed it. A lot of fun. Uh, you shoot with the Honky Talk Man. Incredible. Amazing. One of the best you shoots I've ever seen. It was just the way he interacts with these, with the smart marks, so to speak. It's just hilarious. And I do. I will admit, he's very critical of the wrestling business. There's very people that, very few people that he likes. One of the, I can, I can remember two names throughout the entire DVD that he said he was friend, he was friends with. One was Bad News Brown, which I thought was funny because a lot of people don't. A lot of the things I've read haven't said good things about Bad News Brown. Rest in peace. And the other that he was friends with was Brian Alvarez. Like they talked about Dave Meltzer and he said how Dave Meltzer had invented a system that did not work in the starting system and like called him a failure and all this and that. Then Wade Keller. And then he said Wade Keller has blatantly lied about information that he's posted. And then they said Brian Alvarez and he said, eh, me and Brian are friends. You know, we're friends. I like Brian. So... Yeah, but he's not high in the wrestling business, but it is very funny to see 
it's very funny to see how he interacts with wrestling fans when they send in their questions. And it's just a, it's just a wonderful, wonderful, you know, just a wonderful insight into, into a wonderful insight into into the honky talk man. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. So yeah, definitely, definitely recommend it. I thought it was pretty awesome. Not gonna lie. Um, yeah. Uh, now uh, let's go to uh, guest Booker with Kevin Sullivan. This was pretty good. Um, this was the first one I believe they ever did. I got this by accident. I ordered the Yushu with Ring of Honor, and they sent me the guest Booker one by accident with Kevin Sullivan. And then I sent them an email, and they never responded. And then just the next time I placed an ROH order, like two months later, I just ordered the Yushu one anyways. I mean, I'm like, yeah, the guest book one was all right. It's pretty good. It's all right, you know. Maybe if I had watched wrestling during that time period, like he rebooks the WWF in like 84, I would have been more into it. But I don't know. I thought it was kind of, I thought he was kind of pale in some parts and I thought he wasn't all that interesting throughout. But I still thought it was enjoyable. It was, it was fine. Guest book with Jerry Jarrett was very, very good. Um, this talks about him rebooking WCW 2000. His main event program was Hogan versus Sid. Um, he books like I forget who he books like AJ Styles as Terry Funk's protege, which I thought was a really great storyline. The way he did it, I thought was really interesting. And not only that, you get you get Jerry Jarrett talking about TNA, talking about booking in general. His booking philosophies are very interesting. That's what that's what makes this DVD um, a lot better than what it was. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Very 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 good stuff from Jerry Jarrett. And finally, straight shooting series with Jim Cornette and Bill Watts. I just saw this recently. I'm just kind of throwing this one in here. I finished this like a few days ago. Just kind of throwing it in here so I can review it. Um, great. Awesome. 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 I'm going to put awesome, not great. Um, just it, It's great education to the wrestling business. You hear Bill Watts and Jim Cornette talk about wrestling in the 1970s and the 1980s. I'm, I'm currently watching Volume 2 right now, which talks more about WCW in the 90s. But yeah, it's just... The way Bill Watts ran his promotion, his opinions on the wrestling business, how he respects Vince McMahon, but he feels the way Vince McMahon monopolized the wrestling business, killed the wrestling business. He talks about locker room etiquette and what he did to his wrestlers, um, getting over, drawing money. It's all in here. It's just awesome. Arguably the best shoot I've ever seen. It's very close. Um, th this is just so enjoyable. Thoroughly, thoroughly recommend this one. I'm picking up a Ring of Honor's website. So, yep, that's it for me. These are the forgotten reviews. I expect this to be one of the lowest viewed videos I've ever had. But, hey, we'll see. Maybe people will like it. All right. I'm Big Red 310. I'm out, guys. Oh, no, no, no. Before before I go, let me just talk about World of Hurt. I've been watching it. I saw the first episode, and I'm, I'm about to see the second episode, too. Um, the world of A World of Hurt is Lance Storm's, Lance Storm's show. Um, he had this... Uh, this idea for a television show, a reality show. It's very similar to Tough Enough, except there's no eliminations. Basically because he says he wanted to have eliminations and a prize, you know, a prize of possibly a WWE contract because he, he has a good relationship with WWE. But the Canadian company that was going to produce this show told him, by Canadian rules, if you want to get funding for this program, there can't be winners, there can't be a prize, and there can't be a contest. Um, way to go, Canada. And no eliminations. But I think... I think Personally, I think that's a good thing. It's his reality show. He, he runs a wrestling school in Canada. It's him with his students. It's very similar to Tough Enough. I think it's a good thing that there's no eliminations and no WWE contract because then it would be the exact same thing as Tough Enough. And although the show would arguably be better than Tough Enough, Tough Enough, you know, it's still – it's been around longer. People understand it more. Why would people want to watch Lance Storm shows when they can watch Tough Enough? Like, you know, it's just – it'd be too close to being the same thing. Whereas now this is different. It's something different, which is good because it's tough enough done right. There's no bullshit. It focuses all on wrestling. It focuses I, – I like tough enough just so you know. I'm a big fan of the show, but that's more because I'm a big fan of reality television, not because I'm a big fan of the wrestling in the show. Um, but the, what am I say? The World of Hurt is really good. It's more about training in the ring with Lance Storm. Each episode focuses on a different person. He has like 10 students. All the students I believe are former students of his and he's just, you know – bringing them all in for the show and it's like 10 students each episode centers on a different student and they talk about that student's training they talk about building up to a show Lance Storm watches the match that a person has at this show and critiques it and evaluates it and it's just really really fun it's short um the episodes are only 30 minutes long and since it's not in the U.S. it's only in Canada without commercials they'd only be like 20 minutes long and they're just really 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 enjoyable um just they're short but they're fun there's a guy in there named the French Stallion who's absolutely, absolutely 100% amazing. It's guys and girls. I know one of the girls. One of the girls I saw on a Shimmer show I just saw. Tenille is her name. But yeah, it's just, it's really informative. I really like it. If you're a big fan of the 
wrestling business proponents would really love this. Um, <laughs> like if you just love the art of pro wrestling, you would really enjoy this. It does. If you don't like tough enough, then I, I would give this a shot because it's enjoyable. Now, where you can watch it, that's up to you. <laughs> it was on YouTube. It, get, it gets put on YouTube for like a day. Then it gets taken down. You can obviously download it if you want. Normally, I don't condone downloading stuff. But this is a TV show that's not available in this country. So that's more than okay with me. Some websites stream it. It's up to you. But if you, do if you download stuff regularly, you can, you can just download this very easily. And it doesn't take up that much room either. Um, it's, only, it's only a 22-minute file. I think it's like 400 megabytes or something like that. But yeah, definitely a great show. Definitely, I really like it. So definitely check out A World of Hurt. And and um, yeah, that's all I have for today. I'm Big Rat 310. And I'm out. Thank you all. See ya.